Hey guys, Dr. Deal here. So this is a conference talk I gave at the Ortho Biologics Institute. It's the world's largest regenerative sports medicine conference. I was honored to be invited there and privileged to talk to ortho biologic specialists around the world. It was an exciting talk. It was about platelet rich plasma injections, specifically the next generation. I hope you guys will really enjoy it because it really goes into nuances about different types of PRP. There's so many people doing PRP, but they don't really understand the difference between the different types. And so there's a lot of people offering it, but not really doing it properly. So hopefully this talk will educate everyone about how to actually differentiate between the different types of PRP. So my name is Dr. Adil Khan. I'm going to be presenting on the next generation of platelet-rich plasma injections. First, I'd like to thank Dr. Anthony Gallia and Dr. Ira Brookman. They've worked really hard over the past years, and I have the honor of presenting their data today. So I have no relationships or commercial interests to disclose. In terms of uh, table of contents, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be talking about the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis, we're going to be talking about the cytorich processing. We're going to be talking about some of our clinical data, and then we'll be going over a brief summary. So in terms of the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis, we now know it's not just a wear and tear condition. It's actually an inflammatory condition characterized by synovial inflammation and cartilage damage. What happens is that there's too, if there's too much inflammation and too many inflammatory markers, such as TNF-alpha, IL-1, uh, matrix metalloproteinases, this leads to degradation of the joint as well as chronic inflammation, which can lead to pain and stiffness. In terms of what we want to do is we really want to be able to target these different inflammatory mediators. So what you can see on this slide here is that there's tissue inhibitor metalloproteinases, which can help target MMPs. And then there's also interleukin receptor antagonists, which can help to target IL-1, which is another pro-inflammatory cytokine. And continued here is talking about the monocyte and how it's important for generating inflammatory mediators such as IL-1, as well as tumor necrosis factor. And as we talked about earlier, uh, MMPs are also, can be also be secreted by monocytes, and they can facilitate the breakdown of the extracellular matrix, which can lead to the cartilage and joint uh, degradation. In terms of the TIMPs that we were talking about, and as well as the interleukin receptor antagonists, they both help to target these inflammatory mediators. So that's really become an area of interest not only for us, but for other bi ortho biologic specialists that are looking at to target osteoarthritis and chronic inflammation. As well, of course, there's the regenerative component of the plasmas, and there's active proteins such as IL-4, 10, 13, and platelet-derived growth factor, which are all also important for the regenerative component of the plasma. So the key take-home message for the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis is that it really disturbs the cellular signaling via cytokines. So that's what the key take home message is. Why do we think PRP and bone marrow concentrate work? So initially we used to think that stem cell injections were going to regrow new tissue, but what we know now is really it's about the cell signaling. So it's more appropriately called medicinal signaling cells. And the reason for this is because it helps to increase growth factors such as TGF beta and helps to target inflammatory factors such as IL-1. So it's actually very similar to how the new plasma injections work, they're targeting specific inflammatory cytokines. And so that's the important thing to remember. It's not about engraftment, it's about paracrine secretion. So what we've learned now is it's really the secretome, all the different growth factors and anti-inflammatory cytokines that these different orthobiologic injectables are delivering to the local tissue. So how do we target these different inflammatory pathways? So there's been several proposed solutions. So one is autologous condition serum, which contains highly concentrated levels of anti-inflammatory proteins and growth factors. So this is better known as orthokine or regenokine. And then there's also lorcivinate, which is a new molecule that's being in development right now, which is also targeting the inflammatory messengers, as well as the, what's called the Wnt pathway. And then Enstride is another one that's an autologous protein solution, which has been infused with anti-inflammatory cytokines and anabolic growth factors. So we can clearly see a theme here where we're trying to target these different inflammatory pathways. And what we've done with our cytorich second generation PRP is a novel autologous biological composition that's derived from the patient's own blood to help target these different conditions such as chronic tendinosis, chronic osteoarthritis, and chronic muscle tears. And similarly, as we'll go through, we're targeting the inflammatory pathway. But there's also what's called the Wnt signaling pathway, which has been important in the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis. So that's also something that uh, we have to keep in mind with uh, these different injectables. When we process the cytorich plasma, what it does is it actually increases 
the anti-inflammatory cytokines. So you can see that the TIMPs get increased here, and you can also see that the platelet-derived growth factor gets increased. What we did find was there was a decrease in the TGF beta. However, we, we, through our processing, we've been able to modify this to help preserve the levels. So what we've done is we've made our own centrifuge to standardize the processing of cytorich injections. So you can see here, it has a very nice, clean aesthetic design, uh, but more importantly, we've made it so that it's uh, very user-friendly and there's very low risk of error. There's what's called an RFID tag, so you have to scan it in order for it to be released by the device, so it will match it to the right patient. This is eliminating essentially any possibility of mixing it with someone else and also making it very uh, user-friendly. So in terms of our actual clinical trial, what we did was we looked at cytorich second-generation platelet-rich plasma versus the standard platelet-rich plasma. And we looked at this specifically in knee osteoarthritis patients. You'll notice that a little different from the standard studies is that we actually found that with four injections with the cytorich platelet-rich plasma worked quite well even for many patients with moderate to severe osteoarthritis. And importantly, the safety data here you can see is similar to platelet-rich plasma in that there's very minimal side effects. And the results here, shown here show that we had significant improvement as compared to standard platelet-rich plasma at 29 days and even at 169 days. And um, I can say anecdotally that with a lot of our patients that we've treated, a lot of times the injection can last for one to two years. So of course, this is just one, one trial. So we are in the midst of doing more trials. And in fact, we actually have registered a 5,000 patient trial in the US. It's gonna be a randomized control trial, multi-center, and we're gonna be comparing standard platelet-rich plasma to a cytorich second-generation platelet-rich plasma in knee osteoarthritis. So this will obviously give us a better idea of the outcomes in a larger cohort and hopefully allow us to scale this new generation of plasma to more people. And importantly, we've also established our own orthobiologics database. We found that we can treat patients with many chronic inflammatory conditions, people with severe facet osteoarthritis, sacroiliitis, uh, nerve entrapments, and chronic tendinosis have all been patients that we've treated successfully. And many of these patients were even refractory to the standard platelet-rich plasma, but the cytorich second-generation platelet-rich plasma was able to work and provide them with significant relief. So takeaways and conclusion. So both in vitro and clinical data show that cytorich second-generation platelet-rich plasma is an anti-inflammatory, anti-catabolic, and safe and effective autologous regenerative biological treatment for knee osteoarthritis. The next generation of platelet-rich plasma injections will use personalized medicine to target the dynamically changing biological signals. Okay, so that's it for the video and the talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be giving another talk at the CASM conference, which is Canada's largest sports medicine conference. I'm presenting about intraosseous PRP. I was the first doctor in Canada to do this. So I'm continuing to innovate and pioneer certain things in the field, and I'm excited to share that with you guys. So keep an eye out for that.